In this video, we're going to remove the dog disc on my sister's bike. And here are the tools, because that tool, a chain whip. That's right. The often maligned dork disc is put on the rear hub to fill the gap between the largest cog on the cassette and the spokes. It prevents the chain jumping off the lowest gear and getting stuck between the cassette and the spokes causing damage to both the wheel and the chain. This can happen if the derailleur isn't adjusted properly or if the derailleur or its hanger get bent or knocked towards the spokes. The derailleur has upper and lower limit screws which stop the derailleur moving too far towards the wheel dropout or too far towards the spokes. If the lower limit screw isn't set to stop at the lowest gear, the derailleur can move the chain beyond the lowest gear and into the spokes. So that all sounds helpful, right? So why would we take off the poor old dork disc? There is a small weight saving, but it all comes down to aesthetics. Maybe if the disc attached to the comp alloy was smaller, a more subtle shade and remained in a central position, it wouldn't grab your eye so much. So the one on Millie's bike has to go. We decided to remove the cassette from the wheel to take off the dork disc, though there are a few alternative approaches to removing the disc that include cutting it and removing it in pieces. We had the tools needed to remove the cassette, which also gave us the opportunity to get more familiar with the bike and the SRAM NX group set. So let's get on with taking the dork disc off. So we're going to take the cassette off, put the cassette tool in the middle there, then drape the chain wick, turn it over, like that, so the chain faces the cogs, kind of engaging on the teeth, let's find some teeth, there we go, there you go, nice, just loosen that, okay you can take the whip off now, okay, take the whip off, and then we can just do this, okay, the, the lock ring, the cassette lock ring, is out. So what we can do is we can lift the whole cassette assembly straight off. Oh, can I feel that? Ow. Okay, these outer cogs are actually loose, so we don't want to disturb those, otherwise we'll have to realign them. It's not a big deal, but it's nice if we don't have to. I think I know what's wrong with the disc. Okay, you are removing it. It's nice, excellent. We're going to put it back together without the dork disc. So Millie, we're going to put a little bit of grease around the lock ring. So now we need to line it up and put it back on, okay? With the SRAM NX12 speed cassette, the largest four cogs are joined together by a spider. The rest of the cogs are loose and separated by spacers. When we reinstalled the cassette, I disturbed the cogs so we had to fit them individually. With the exception of the smallest cog, there is only one way to fit them, as the free hub body you slide them onto has a specific pattern of notches or splines that only allow the cogs to go on at a specific position. The smallest 11 tooth gear is more fiddly. We found no guidance on SRAM's website on how to install it, but pictures of the cassette show arrows on the cogs lining up in a specific way. We mirrored this approach. Please let us know in the comments if you have any better insight on the alignments of the final cog. You want to come and put the uh, lock ring on? Yeah. There you go. That's the right one, yeah. Okay, we have to screw it in. Just pop it down there. Make sure the seat go down. Put it all the way in. Right, now pull it towards you. In there, nice and tight. Keep going. And this is supposed to be torqued up to 40 newton meters, which is pretty tight. We are done. We are now dork discless. While it's a subjective call, we think the bike looks much improved without the disc. Plus, we now get to use the dork disc as a frisbee. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing watching Dizzy Does Downhill. Make sure to subscribe, put some comments down below and like it. And check out our other video. <laughs>